Hallie just got back from CES and a bunch of people in the room, I think, were there. And um, Ryan, you think a lot about this kind of what's going to happen next in the space. So how far do these devices go? Do you think that every patient will have <coughs> the next generation of a Fitbit implanted somewhere in their body <laughs> so that, you know, they don't have to worry about tracking their calories, and is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? Yeah, I think there's some, there's some great technologies coming out there. There's um, Proteus, it's a, it's a device you're actually swallowing, it's tracking data to a patch that's on you where it sends yeah. the data out. Qualcomm has some great technology around this as well. Um, the Fitbit itself is interesting to us. Um, I, I, we, just anecdotal, we give it to every one of our employees and um, the, the number that have gone through washing machines are that people stick them on their dog and the dog is the winner every week on our, on our fitness challenge. So I, I think that, you know, I think that it's going to be integrated into the phone very soon. I think that's obvious. I think the motion trackers and sensors are there. I think that's just going to happen. So I think that health will be more encompassed in, in much like Mike's app, just part of your daily lives. I think it will be social very soon as well. These are obvious steps. I think that where I see it going, and I think this might be one of the questions later on we're going to talk about, is that there's companies that are arising that are doing great you know, telemedicine efforts. So whether it's Google, the, the Hangouts that just got launched, the, yes. So, yep. so yep. Th whether it's Google or Ring a Doc here, Jordan's here, um, with the telemedicine offerings, wh what's going to be really interesting is that when I'm communicating with my doctor with this device, and the device is picking up some of my biological data, so whether it's heart rate, pulse, and, and, and just potentially lab data is being pulled off, the doctor can do remote diagnoses, and we see that happening. I think we're three years off from being able to tackle that, and that's, that's interesting. That's when you can offset some of the delivery issues of, of um, the supply and demand of the number of patients that need care yeah. and the number of doctors that are available can be offset into other countries, and that's, yeah. that's really, really interesting to me. Yeah. I think what's going to happen with any of the gadgets that are just activity trackers is that they're going to eventually just be apps on our phone. Yep. I mean, the phone is becoming, yep. Yep. we are already, uh, Argo is a great example of this. Even Fitbit, they launched an app uh, that's, that's an right. activity tracker as yep. well. So I think on the wellness side, we're going to see um, a lot of that just going into native features in the phone. And mm -hmm. we are very much in the early adopter phase. And Fitbit's doing really, really well. Mm -hmm. um, just wait until that market gets to become mainstream, but it will be in the phone. I think what um, what, we, what Ryan was saying around the clinical application of it is when you're taking you know, different measurements than just activity and step right. and sleep, when you get into applications that can help us continuously monitor our health. So our doctors don't just have vitals when we're in the office, in their office once a year, um, but they get continuous data, and we get continuous data so we can be alerted of issues before they're actually mm -hmm. problems. That's yeah. when it gets really interesting. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So, Hallie, what was the coolest thing you saw at CES? Uh, so the coolest thing I saw was tangential to health, but uh, it was a... It was like a basketball, a connected basketball, and I do not know how to <laughs> shoot hoops. <laughs> but it had this. There was a screen, and it was sitting right next to me. And I threw the basketball, and it told me to move my hand and aim for the that back. Really and cool. the third time, wow. I, I adjusted twice and got ended up. I've never gotten a hoop ever, <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> ever. But, but literally, because of the sensors they had in the basketball and in the hoop, they were able to coach me, a virtual coach, and that was that was cool. That LeBron Teco. Cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>